Hi, I'm Prof L and welcome to Chemistry Matters. And today we are going to be continuing talking about acids and bases and we are going to discuss weak acids now and weak bases. Okay, so in previous videos in this series we have discussed the strengths of acids and bases and we have concentrated on strong acids and strong bases. So what we're saying is that uh, strong acids react completely with water, they donate a proton completely to water to form H3O+, and strong bases rip off a proton from water, they accept a proton from water and um, that gives complete formation of OH-. Okay. And when it comes to doing stoichiometric calculations involving strong acids and strong bases, it's relatively straightforward because, well, precisely that, they are stoichiometric. They are reactions that go to completion, and so quite easily you can do those types of calculations. However, strong acids and strong bases are very, very much in the minority when it comes to acids and bases. There's only really a handful of truly strong acids and truly strong bases. The vast, vast, vast majority of acids and bases are what we call weak. Okay, Weak acids and weak bases. Right, so let's have a little bit of a look at what we mean by weak acids and weak bases. So let's take a hypothetical equilibrium here. Okay, We're going to have HA plus H2O and we're going to say this is an equilibrium with H3O plus plus A minus. Okay, aqueous here, aqueous here, that's a liquid, and that's aqueous. Okay, now if this were a strong acid, what we would say is that this reaction would proceed to completion and we'd get uh, stoichiometric formation of H3O plus and A minus, and that would make our calculations very straightforward. However, we don't, okay, because now we're talking about a weak acid and, uh, by analogy, weak base as well. So let's have a look at um, how we now quantify weak acids and weak bases. So the definition of a weak acid is an acid that reacts with water incompletely, okay, so in other words, it donates a proton to water, but it doesn't do it stoichiometrically. Okay? And so in other words, this reaction here does not go to completion. Okay, so how then, if we want to do stoichiometric calculations, how can we do them if the reaction doesn't go to completion? Well, we have in previous videos, I guess, set up the uh, mechanics by which we can do these sorts of calculations uh, when we talked about equilibria. Okay, and this <clears throat> is an equilibrium situation now. Instead of going to completion, we're only going part of the way. So when it comes to doing stoichiometric calculations involving equilibria, we needed to use the equilibrium constant in those. Now this is no different. We're going to require an equilibrium constant for this reaction, and so let's write it. And so this equilibrium constant, again, is a special equilibrium constant, so we're going to give it its very own name. We're going to call it Ka. Kaa for acid. And it is going to be just like any other equilibrium constant. It's going to be products divided by reactants. And if there's any pure liquids or pure solids in there, we don't put them in. So let's have a look at our equation. Aqueous HA plus liquid water giving H3O plus plus A minus. So we're going to have a top line of concentration of H3O+, plus, concentration of A-, minus, and our bottom line is going to be concentration of HA. And that's it. That's an aqueous species. Remember, water, liquid water, is a pure liquid, so therefore that's not going to appear in the equilibrium constant expression. And this is what we get. This is our special now acidity constant, sometimes called an acid dissociation constant. So Ka, symbol Ka, and that equals the H3O plus concentration, the A minus concentration over the 
concentration of the acid. Okay, now that's a weak acid. How about a weak base now? So let's take a base, aqueous, and we're going to react that with water, and that's going to be a pure liquid. We're going to now again have an equilibrium situation because we're talking about a weak base. And so the weak base is going to react with water a little bit to form the protonated base and OH minus the hydroxide ion, and that's going to be aqueous as well. Okay, so this again is an equilibrium reaction. It doesn't go to completion. So again, if we're going to be using um, these sorts of uh, reactions and calculations, we're going to need an equilibrium constant for them. And again, because this is a base, it now has its own special, surprise, surprise, equilibrium constant, and no surprises here, we're going to call it Kb. And Kb, again, is going to look just like any other equilibrium constant expression. Products on the top, reactants on the bottom, get rid of any solids or pure liquids. So therefore, it's going to look like this. Concentration of BH plus, the protonated base, hydroxide ion concentration, all over concentration of any unreacted base that is there. Okay, so uh, very important uh, equilibrium constants here, Ka and Kb. Okay, um, now, Ka and Kb, so what do they mean? Why, why do we bother with these? What are they telling us? Well, the values of Ka and Kb tell us a lot about the strength of particular acids, or Kb tells you about the strength of a particular base. So basically the guts of it is, the larger the value of Ka, the stronger the acid. <clears throat> okay, if we've got strong acids, then Ka tends to infinity. It can be that big, okay? We, again, remember, say that a strong acid reacts essentially completely with water, so therefore Ka is going to be massive. Whereas a weak acid, what we generally find is that Ka is less than, whoops, not less than zero, less than one, okay? And in fact, we could probably say, in most cases, a um, Ka of very much less than one, very much less than one. Okay, same with bases. A strong base has got a Kb that tends to infinity, and a weak base, again, correspondingly, the value of Kb is generally very much less than one. Okay, and as I said, when we're talking acids and bases, the vast majority of acids are weak acids, the vast majority of bases are weak bases. Okay, now, um, there's a very important um, equation that comes out of all of this, and what you'll find is that Ka times Kb is equal to Kw, okay? How do I know that? Well, let's write the expression for Ka. So Ka is H3O plus times um, concentration of uh, A minus, let's say, over the concentration of HA, and then Kb for uh, the conjugate base is equal to, uh, that is equal to OH minus times uh, the concentration of HA over concentration of A minus. Okay, if you write the um, equations for Ka and Kb where your um, acid is HA and your conjugate base is A minus, those are the expressions that you'll get. You see that A minus cancels with A minus there, HA cancels with HA there, and then you get H3O plus concentration multiplied by OH minus concentration. And that, we've seen before, that's the expression for Kw. Okay, 
So what does this then mean? It means that there is a relationship between the strength of an acid and its conjugate base. And now this is stuff that gets taught incorrectly at schools, dare I say it, okay? So Ka times Kb equals Kw. So in other words, as the Ka of an acid gets bigger, in other words, as an acid gets stronger, the Kb of its conjugate base gets smaller. In other words, the Kb or the, the conjugate base gets weaker. Okay, so what we say is that if you have a strong acid, its conjugate base is very weak. Okay, a strong acid like HCl has a very, very weak conjugate base, Cl minus. Very, very, very weak. And conversely, if you've got a strong base like OH minus, its conjugate acid, H2O, is a very, very, very weak acid. Okay. So those are the extremes. Strong acid, very weak conjugate base. Strong base, very weak conjugate acid. But the conjugate acid or the conjugate base of a weak acid is weak, not strong. The conjugate base of a weak acid is weak. And the conjugate acid of a weak base is weak, OK? The reason for that being that Ka times Kb has to equal Kw. So let's say that Ka for your weak acid is equal to 10 to the minus 7, let's say. Then Kb for the conjugate base of that weak acid also has to be 10 to the minus 7. They're both weak. Okay. So don't let what some teachers may have taught you that a weak acid has a strong conjugate base. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, definitely not. Okay. It doesn't work like that. Okay. So. We've now introduced um, the idea of uh, weak acids, weak bases. One more thing, we're going to take the negative log of both sides of this equation, and we're going to find another important relationship. pKa plus pKb is equal to pKw, which at 25 degrees is equal to 14. So in other words, if we know the pKa, we can very easily get the pKb simply by subtracting from 14. So important uh, equations there, important manipulations of equations, and um, that will do for today, and we will see you in the next video. See you later.